Okay, thanks for joining me. We got a case file here on a 2012 Toyota Prius. P0302, cylinder two misfire, is happening on a cold start. Uh, this was a good one, been to multiple shops. Uh, dealership visit, I don't like you know putting down other shops, so I'm not gonna do that. We all make mistakes, I've made mine my fair share in 24 years, but that code, P0302, cylinder misfire, is kind of misleading. You kind of think of a spark plug not firing, so naturally the spark plug gets replaced the most for misfire codes. This is what a cylinder should be doing when it's firing correctly. See the spark plug fire, air and fuel being compressed, it ignites, pushes the piston down, and we have a proper firing. This is the cutaway of what's going on inside your engine. This basically shows the intake valve opening right now. The blue cold air and fuel coming in, getting sucked in or pushed in depending on the load, if it's at idle or not. So air is coming into the cylinder, the piston goes up, valves are shut, it compresses the air. And then after the compression of the air and fuel, the spark plug should fire and push that piston down, accelerating the crankshaft. Right there, the brown would be the exhaust. If you want to call it like a residue or, well, exhaust is a great word too, but that exhaust is a byproduct of the air and fuel igniting. We need to get rid of it. Our exhaust valve on the left there opens, piston pushes out the exhaust. So really we need three things to not have a misfire. We need compression. So compression is an important one. We just talked about that. Fuel, we need a fuel source. And then the third thing is we need ignition. You see that coming up here. But if it was a diesel, we wouldn't have a spark plug. We would have compression ignition. But this is a Prius. It does not use compression ignition. And it's gasoline engine. This is what that disc you see rotating there is basically a tone wheel. And so the, the crankshaft position sensor has a tone wheel attached to those piston, pistons through the crankshaft, the red being the crankshaft, and it rotates. And so to detect a misfire on modern vehicles, a little blue spot there, purple, that's where the sensor would be. And the little you have little humps on the wheel called a crankshaft position sensor tone wheel. So the sensor is detecting the speed of a wheel, which really is the speed of your pistons, and this is what that looks like when your computer sees it. Um, it's creating an on and off signal for every hump or gap, cavity, whatever you want to call it, on the wheel attached to your pistons. And so to detect a misfire, your engine computer is using basically a math channel like you see here that I created using the Pico scope. And if you know which cylinder is number one, which typically it uses a cam position tone wheel and sensor to detect cylinder ID, now that crankshaft position sensor signal change in speed can be detected by the engine computer and that's going to tell us which cylinder is misfiring. Now the older the vehicle, the less accurate it is. So. In this case, we'll talk about it in a minute, I had more than one cylinder throwing a misfire code, which is, you see a drop there in the picture, that drop there is a misfiring cylinder because it's not accelerating the piston, so that wheel doesn't move as fast. And so that is what you don't wanna see if you're to look at a live crankshaft position sensor on a vehicle. So, really difficult way of also detecting a misfire is, is using a scope, hooking up to the crankshaft position sensor and looking for a drop like that, but that's another subject. So on this 2012 Prius that's been to multiple shops, I looked at uh, the codes, always start with the scan report, and we had two codes with the aftermarket scan tool using the Autel Pro model, and it showed P0302, cylinder two misfire. Now, when I use a factory scan tool, it showed more codes. We had P0300 and P0304. So cylinder four misfire also, and random cylinder misfires. 
So looking at the freeze frame for cylinder two misfire using the factory scan tool, and you can get freeze frame using Autel as well, but uh, this one's easier just to read. I had 77 counts on this startup. Misfire was detected by the computer because it saw a drop in the crankshaft speed. Think of that wheel. So that wheel slowed down, math channel picked it up, and the computer threw a code. So at this point, I know it's got a misfire number two. I know about when it's happening because I looked at the freeze frame. Right here, I decided to use a compression check on the scan tool, which you can do on this model of Prius, and all the cylinders are pretty even compression. That's called a relative compression test. It's a quick test you can do. Also, software update. Always going to do a check to see if there's a software update. There was one, and the shop had one of the shops decided to do a software update. Um, looking further into it and the notes of that shop, it was done because of a EGR uh, and misfire while driving. But looking at the shop's notes and then also looking at the note here, it says only applicable if it's ha happening under the same conditions. Also disconnect the EGR and see if the misfire goes away. I don't think any of that was done because they recommended the EGR intake and a software update. Now these are the things that have been replaced by other shops on this vehicle, head gasket, coils, spark plugs, etc. cetera. Um, we know when it happens, cold start mostly, but it seems to stop misfiring after about 20 seconds. And really it stops when it goes into closed loop. And at this point, I, just, I decided to use a pulse sensor in the intake manifold in the exhaust uh, outlet, so the exhaust pipe. And then I have a trigger point to reference what pulses are what using a coil. And the blue there is the picoscope picking up the exhaust, the green lines and signals. The green is the intake manifold vacuum pulls from each cylinder. And the red is a trigger point cylinder number two uh, ignition coil. So we go in here and we can zoom in. And this is a live misfire on this 2012 Prius. It's misfiring right now. And at this point, we can collect this data and review it later. So using the oscilloscopes, a big part of it is grabbing data as much as you can when it's happening and then walk away and review it later if it's a problem car and you, you feel like it's not going to be anything quick and easy. Looking at it, I noticed that all the intake pulls were even, indicating compression was probably okay. But we have a vacuum pull right there that doesn't look the same as the others. You don't get that double hump on one of the green vacuum pulls. So there, each vacuum pull for each cylinder on this Prius is even, so it's partially okay mechanically, but we don't have uh, even looking symmetrical humps there. And that, that one intake pull is missing the double hump. So I'll try and look at it here further here on this picoscope. Using an overlay, I can figure out what cylinder it is. So it's the number two yellow is intake. So the cylinder number two intake stroke. And that tells me that mechanically it's missing that second hump. Mechanically it's not okay. So I decided to look inside the number two cylinder. I do see some coolant in there inside the combustion chamber in the cylinder, but not enough to cause a misfire on cold start yet. This would have been a problem down the road, even though the head gasket was done, who knows if the cylinder head surface was scratched up uh, too much during cleaning or the gasket they put on could have failed, it could be a parts failure. Doesn't, can't really tell just by looking at this, but we don't have an exact cause yet by looking at this image in this video. We know we're getting coolant in there. Could be sucking coolant in with it running 
and causing a misfire, but that wouldn't cause a green intake pool to lose that second hump. And, and so we know that we have something mechanical going on. But this is what the coolant surge tank startup uh, when it's misfiring, what the surge tank cooling system pressure looks like with the pulse sensor. Really good test to do. There's no anomaly indicating a head gasket filling at this moment. So we won't focus on that. Now I did a, a running compression test, a cranking compression test, and I found basically why it was misfiring by using the in-cylinder pressure test. The red is the number two cylinder and the green is a good cylinder. Going back to that, I decided to look back in the cylinder, crank the engine over, and I realized looking at my uh, green versus red cylinder pressure overlay, since it didn't match, that it was mechanical. So it's second indicator, we had a mechanical issue. Intake pulse wasn't right, and the cylinder pressure wasn't matching a good cylinder. So back to examine the cylinder, you're going to see it hopefully right here in a second, basically the intake valve, one of them was not opening. So one intake valve opened, those are exhaust valves right there. That second intake valve you see there is not opening. So I basically checked it further by sticking a really tiny camera through the valve cover opening where you add oil and the rocker arm was missing. Um, don't know where that rocker arm was at, but based off of the pull sensors, I knew I had a mechanical issue. Traditional compression tests at the shops would have passed with flying colors. Maybe the running compression would have been a bit high because one intake valve wasn't opening, so it's not sucking as much air. Um, you know, and, and if you can't get the air out during the compression stroke at the beginning when the intake valves are open, it might have a slightly higher running compression, which I did start to see that a little bit, but the takeaway from this is it, it could have been quickly checked with the intake pulse system and looking at that, but it's also not a standard mandatory equipment for even dealerships. Dealerships now recommend picoscopes, but they don't supply the pulse sensors because they're too much, I'm guessing. So really steep learning curve. Hope this was helpful. And this is what it looks like with basically one valve not opening. A little quick schematic there.